Time now for this Friday's Focus Report, which takes us to Russia. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the country has had to redefine a common ideology to bind society together. In recent years, authorities have turned to the Orthodox Church and its conservative values, which are broadly accepted by many in Russia. But uh, the strength, by strengthening the church, the Kremlin has also given a voice to fringe Christian groups whose, influences, whose influence is on the rise. This report from our Moscow correspondents, Thomas Lowe and Ksenia Shaihut Dinova. A celebration of Orthodox faith in central Moscow. Believers have come from across the country to put religious art and literature on display. Polls show a small number of Russians go to church regularly, but the church and its conservative outlook do enjoy broad support. For us, these moral values, these church values will always be very important. And even if someone says they don't believe in God, they would still want to live in a society where church values are the main values. The Kremlin agrees, and it's increasingly using these values to forge a national identity. This documentary was released two months ago for the 70th birthday of Patriarch Kirill, who heads the church. You cannot separate the Orthodox face from Russia. Throughout our history, it's played a significant role in the life of our state and our people. Christian values and Orthodoxy form the base of our morals. But among the faithful, there's no consensus how close their church should be to the state. The state's only concerned about material things, while the church takes care of morals. And these are two very different tasks. We're living in a blessed time when the church and the government stand united. That's very important to maintain our traditions, our national culture and our ideology. Meanwhile, the government is strengthening orthodox teachings in a key pillar of society, education. A new subject on Russian spiritual and moral culture is being trialled in 40 schools. Ina Gerasimova's son studies in one of them. She's worried about the orthodox religious content of the course textbook that's supposed to be secular. Here it's written, there's a lot of light on this icon, but we never see its source. Why? Isn't it because the light comes from the angels and the Holy Trinity? Inna believes the textbook runs foul of the Constitution, which says religion and the state must be kept separate. I told all the parents at a meeting about the book and we all agreed and voted against it. At first, not everyone agreed, but we realized we were faced with a simple choice. Either we all stand against it or we do nothing. In the end, even the parents who are Orthodox believers agreed that public schools aren't the right place for religious education. Wide media coverage of Ina's fight has since forced the school to remove the textbook and cancel the course. Parents in several other institutions are now collecting signatures to have the lesson stopped. The government brought in a law three years ago that makes it illegal to offend religious believers. It's been used to threaten activists who are against plans to build a new chapel on their park in Moscow. These protesters say their fight isn't with religion, but for the preservation of their public space. The Orthodox Church, however, claims they're anti-Christian. The police raided our house with dogs. They said they were looking for narcotics and explosives. Their goal was to frighten us. The tussle between those defending their park and those who want a new chapel has been going on for a year and a half. For some, it's a battle for values. Right now, all these new tendencies from Europe, ruining the family, a lack of morality, all these things they call values, especially these homosexual marriages, all this is vile. If there are no churches, we'll be lost in lawlessness. The law used to pressure these pro-park activists is allowing other fringe religious groups to challenge freedom of speech. A big budget film called Matilda is due to be released in March. It's about a love affair between Russia's last Tsar, Nicholas II, and a ballerina called Matilda. The Tsar was later made a saint. Prominent hardline lawmaker Natalia Paklonskaya received a complaint from two small religious groups who claimed the film offends believers and should be banned.
She's asked Russia's Attorney General to check whether the film has anti-religious content. Being told that we intended to offend the feelings of believers is absurd and stupid. And I'm 100% sure there's nothing like that in the film. The Tsar worked for the good of Russia, but sometimes also did bad deeds. Should we be silent about that and say this is off limits? Well, that doesn't seem right to me. The director believes the film will most probably be released. But by mobilizing the Orthodox Church to create a national ideology, authorities have also created an atmosphere where radical religious voices can easily be heard. Well, we're joined now uh, in the studio by Cyril Brett. Uh, Cyril is an associate professor at Sciences Po and the co-founder of the Eurasia Perspective Think Tank. Thank you for joining us, Cyril. Thank you. Now, we just saw that report. Uh, give us a sense of uh, what the priorities are for, uh, for Russian orthodoxy as a part of Russian power. This isn't just about faith or spirituality, is it? No, it's about influence, of course, political influence within Russia. It's about... A, a, a radical shaping of the new Russia. Let's take one or two examples. First, concerning the uh, role of religion uh, within legislation. It, it has been influencing for a long time now uh, all the legislation concerning abortion, concerning gay rights, more precisely gay non-rights, of course, in, in Russia. And second, it's a, a question of geopolitics as well, mm. because the uh, Orthodox um, Church, and especially his head, Cyril, same name as I say, <laughs> uh, is a, a huge support within Russia and among the Christian communities in the Mideast for the Syrian intervention uh, of Russia. Uh, I've heard it yes. said that in terms of power politics in Russia, uh, the, the, uh, that Cyril has more influence, for example, than Medvedev. Would you think that that's accurate, uh, that, that this yes. is the kind of political influence we're talking about? You're right. It's a different influence. Of course, like every head of church, he has a moral and a spiritual influence. But more than that, he has a, an entire network of clergymen, of clerks, sorry, of churches, uh, playing a huge role in the invisible Russia, meaning the provincial Russia, the far east of uh, the country, and it plays a huge role uh, in association with the uh, lax and the loopholes of the uh, state administrations. Where the uh, welfare state of Russia is not working, church take it over, mm. takes it over, sorry. Mm. So it's a social influence, to come back to your question, it's a social influence, it's a religious and uh, a legal influence as well, and it's a geopolitical support uh, that President Putin cannot uh, do without. And so legally, in the Constitution, there yeah. is a separation between yeah. church and state. Uh, but I believe there was a law passed three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, this law essentially uh, is against offending religious groups. Is, that a, is there a contradiction between those two, <laughs> yes. the Constitution and the As law? usual, yes. There is a huge gap in Russia between the constitutional framework, the legal framework on the one hand, and uh, the uh, reality, especially when it concerns religion. Because if uh, for the last decades, uh, the minority religions, uh, the newcomers, especially the uh, evangelist Christians, have been, let's say, not persecuted, but their activities have been hugely infringed by the uh, central government. So, in, in a consequence, it's very hard today not to be an Orthodox Christian mm. in Russia. Mm. If you are a Muslim, if you are a Catholic, uh, you cannot feel at ease in, in Russia for, for, for the time being. So the legal framework, as usual in Russia, is not that protective of the uh, freedom of religion. Uh, just two further questions here, because we, we don't have a huge amount of time. But we're here in Paris and on the banks of the Seine in the last few months uh, was unveiled this rather spectacular edifice uh, for a Russian cultural centre and an Orthodox church with five dramatic onion domes, domes uh, just uh, a few hundred metres from the Eiffel Tower, from uh, the French Foreign Ministry. The opening of this uh, Russian Orthodox church has been delayed. Can you tell us why? Yeah, it's been, it's been, the inauguration by President Putin has been delayed because uh, it was, it was, 
scheduled precisely at the time when uh, Russia and France uh, took different paths concerning uh, concerning Syria. And it was impossible for the French presidency and for the European uh, Union to endorse or to display a certain level of endorsement for mm. the, the policies that are carried out by President Putin in Syria um, in accepting an official state visit encompassing the inauguration of a church. Uh, and you might add to that that secularism and uh, the uh, constitutional framework of France requires a neutrality from the uh, higher uh, powers in, in the country. And it was at that time, and I think it, it will be for, for a long time, unacceptable for France to uh, accept such an inauguration. We'll have to wait and see, I guess, many, yes. many tensions yes. and many more issues that could be discussed around uh, the Russian Orthodox Church and its influence. Thank you, uh, Cyril Brett. Thank you very much. That. Have a good day.